So like I said, we quoted him about uh, six hours of labor and I think uh, the total bill I think that we said would have been around $600. So we're coming in right under that uh, for the work that we're doing. It's worth it for a machine that's, that's in this condition. Uh, it's a, again, 2014 model and uh, only 10 running hours on it. So here's another thing guys, uh, because we ran the ATF through the, uh, the, the cylinder to get it unseized, all that uh, ATF went into the bottom end. So now we're gonna have to not only change the oil, but we'll probably have to change it twice uh, just to make sure that when we return it to the customer uh, that there's not ATF mixed in with the oil. Uh, that could give us improper lubrication and possibly cause an issue, you know, months and months down the road. So uh, what I'd like to do is uh, do an oil flush. So we'll, we'll flush it, uh, we'll put some fresh oil into it, and uh, we'll run it. Maybe I'll cut the grass here at my house a couple times and then drive it up and down the road, get that oil circulating, and then uh, probably do another oil change, see what it looks like. And uh, once it starts coming out clean, we should be good to go. Now the oil filter on this thing is uh, right up under there, guys. You can see it, it's in there. Um, Kohler's have them uh, hooked up upside down. So uh, you kind of got to unscrew it and then oil just, it makes a mess. And, and uh, if you have your deck attached to your machine when you're changing oil, which a lot of the times uh, that's what happens, um, the, the shops that do these oil changes, they don't put anything under here. Uh, normally what I get is like almost like an aluminum uh, pan that you would use for cooking and you could just jam that thing in there, bend it up, you know, pinch in an end to, to get a triangle shape in there, uh, put that underneath it and then cut a hole in the bottom and then have your oil pan down here and uh, you pull that off, all the oil hits the pan and uh, drains out and you don't get any on your deck. As far as replacing that, I ended up picking up a, a Kohler uh, oil filter. I know that says Briggs & Stratton, but uh, this is for a Kohler that's brand new. We can use that if we need. But like I said, what I'll probably end up doing is uh, an oil change first without touching that oil filter. Uh, and then once I run some oil through it, uh, get that oil circulating, uh, then I'll probably do a full, uh, full drain, flush, and pull the oil filter, install a new oil filter, and uh, this thing should be uh, good to go after that. But uh, now, uh, like I said, I'm gonna do the push rods. I'll get them installed. Uh, I'll get this thing all shimmed up. And uh, I don't know, maybe get the, uh, the muffler back on and get the, uh, uh, all the emission stuff for the muffler. I think it's got like an exhaust gas return valve, almost like the, uh, the vehicles these days, which is crazy. I mean, I don't know why, why Kohler does this stuff. Uh, I know it's for emissions and for the environment, but like, you know, this hooks up to the muffler and then this also hooks up to the, to the carburetor, I think. And then you got another line here that uh, hooks up to the carburetor and that goes back to the gas tank so that's like a, a fuel vapor recirculation so in the summer when your fuel tank heats up uh, all those gases don't vent through your gas cap it actually vents into the carburetor which gets burned through your engine and it's like man no wonder this thing's worth 203 dollars it's because they got all that bs going on so you know briggs and strattons and tecumseh's they don't have any of that they just uh, run a normal carburetor and uh, you don't have to worry about any of that. But uh, like I said before, guys, it's not really hard work. You just got to uh, know what you're doing and, uh, you know, take your time. Uh, if you don't, if you've never done stuff like this before, uh, take lots of pictures, you know. When I was taking this thing apart, I had to take loads of pictures just so that I remembered where a specific bolt went or, uh, you know, a wire hooked up so that when I hook it back up, and reassemble everything uh, that I put it back in the in the way that it was. And again, guys, I've said that uh, this is a really unfortunate situation that uh, our customer has to go through. But again, guys, it's a prime example of why you should not let your machines just sit there uh, and and not run them. You want to fire them up. Uh, you know, you don't want to let uh, old gas sit into the the fuel tank. So if you're going to be storing them for like a year or more, you either drain the fuel and then run what's left of it. You know, until it runs out of, of fuel on its own. Uh, or you uh, you just go and, and you drain the, the gas yourself, you know, and uh, you guys don't want to be leaving these machines sitting because uh, this piston seized in the cylinder probably because of a little bit of moisture that, that got sucked in there. Uh, again, the guy lives right by the, uh, the lake, so there's a lot of moisture and uh, it was left sitting outside. You're getting humidity come up through the, uh, the muffler into the cylinder. Uh, you know, you had those squirrels that were eating the acorns and they're, uh, you know, getting stuff into the carburetor and, and there's all sorts of nasty stuff. 
And uh, again, like I said, guys, this is a 2014. Um, it shouldn't have had this issue, but it does because our customer uh, basically neglected the machine. So now he's got to pay like, you know, 600 bucks to, to get it fixed. But at the end of the day, he'll have a machine that uh, runs like brand new. And, uh, you know, what are you going to do, right? Okay, so I've got my push rods in. I'm going to have to uh, loosen the uh, caps on the uh, rocker arms there. But... If we go to our uh, manual that I downloaded, you guys can see here we got valves and valve lifters. So for our intake valve lash, we have five thousandths of an inch. And for our exhaust valve lash, we have seven thousandths. So uh, an easy way of uh, remembering that is again, cold side, hot side. So five and seven, five and seven. So you're gonna have five thousandths of an inch in between your uh, valve and your rocker arm, and you're gonna have seven thousandths of an inch in between your valve and your rocker arm on that side. Now to uh, loosen your uh, rocker arms, there's uh, an inner set screw, and it's a T15 Torx. So you're gonna back that off first. So right down here, guys, Inside of here is going to be a T15 torque, so you're going to loosen that off, uh, and then you're going to be able to back this nut off. Uh, then you'll be able to lift this. Again, high point goes on to your push rod. You'll be able to lift this because right now you guys can see we're hitting. I've left the spark plug out for now just because, well, we're in a clean workspace, and I'll uh, end up putting a piece of shop towel in there, but uh, at least that lets me rotate the flywheel around. Uh, easily by hand. Okay, and what you guys want to do is find top dead center, which is when the piston is all the way at the top of the cylinder, and you want to do that on the compression stroke. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So here's our intake side, and here's our exhaust side. Now if we rotate the flywheel like it, we normally would if it, this machine would be running, you're going to see this push rod start to move up. Now don't worry about that grinding noise, guys. That's just... Uh, the starter gear, uh, it's not pushing back down into the starter. So again, because this thing has sat for about two years, uh, things have got a little bit uh, seized up. So we're gonna have to uh, hit that with a little bit of uh, lubricant by uh, removing those two little bolts on the starter there. And we'll have to, uh, we'll have to fix that up. But uh, basically, like I said, guys, you're going to turn this and you're gonna see that push rod start to come up. Okay, so what that means is that right now we are on the intake stroke because it's lifting this push rod, which would in turn open your intake valve, right? So that would, this would push up, this rocker arm would push down on your valve opening up. So we know that we're on the intake stroke. Now on a four stroke engine, you go intake, compression, power stroke, and then exhaust stroke. So you're bringing in fuel, then you're going to be compressing it, then you're going to, uh, there's going to be combustion, so that's going to be your power stroke, and then you want to vent out that combustion, so that means your exhaust stroke is the fourth stroke. So we know that after our intake stroke is going to be our compression stroke. So basically we're going to rotate this, and I'm going to take a little piece of wooden dowel, and I'm going to push that into where our spark plug goes, and uh, that will let me know when our piston gets to top dead center. So once it gets to the point where it comes out and then just starts to go back in, after we've got past our intake stroke, uh, then we'll know that we're at top dead center of our compression stroke. Then we'll be able to properly shim our valves. Okay, so again, using a T15 Torx, you're gonna release that little set screw in there on both of these. And now you should be able to back off your nut and get it to the point where you can lift it high enough to get your rocker arm, see that now? Over top of your push rod and your valve. And again, we're at top dead center of the compression stroke, guys. So then you're just gonna snug this up by hand because again, we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to check the, uh, the lash. It's called valve lash. And you're gonna be using a shim tool like this guy right here. My hands are quite greasy. So a shim tool just like this, guys. So it's got all different types, and again, we're gonna be doing, uh, on the right side here, which is the intake side, we're gonna be doing five thousandths of an inch, and then on your exhaust side, we're gonna be doing seven thousandths of an inch. So I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so five thousandths of an inch, but uh, basically what you're gonna do, guys, is you're just gonna take your shim, and you're gonna drop it right in between your rocker arm and your valve, so I can see we're a little too tight there, so just back it off. And guys, if you wanna see, uh, a better example of this, go to my how to shim a valve. Uh, it's like a John Deere 724D. I got a video 
up in the top right of your screen right now you'll see it but uh, this is just a quick run through you go in here you hold this five thousandths of an inch shim in between your rocker arm and your valve just like that guys and then uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten this nut up and then once you get that nut tightened up you're gonna go in there and tighten up your set screw which will hold that nut in place and you don't want it you don't want to crank it down so that this is really hard to pull out you want it so that it's it's just a little grabby okay you just want it so that you can you can barely pull it out on your own and uh, but you don't want it loose to the point where it's like this guys which is it, you know it would just fall out if I let that go however you're gonna have to hold this nut in place when you tighten up that set screw because if you go to tighten up that set screw you're actually gonna rotate this nut which is gonna tighten this further and then once that's all tightened up you won't be able to pull that out and it'll be over tightened so you'll actually be less than five thou uh, because when you pull that out you won't be able to get it back in now again guys this is like super finicky right so like right here you guys can see that's that's way too tight and I can't get get it back in uh, but if I loosen this off just a little bit watch how watch how little I loosen this just like that okay now it now it's too loose almost see that now it's too loose so what I'm gonna do is it's really finicky guys you got to get it almost exact just get it to the point where it feels just right. Right about there feels good. So now, again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my shim in place. I'm gonna get my T15 Torx here, set that to tighten. I'm gonna use my 10 mil stubby wrench here and I'm going to hold that in place. Careful not to move it. And with that in place, just like that, guys, I'm gonna come in here and tighten up my T15 Torx. Okay, you don't wanna really crank it down. If you snap that, guys, you're screwed. You're gonna have to drill it, tap it. It's gonna be a nightmare. But anyways, like I said, hold that wrench still while you tighten it up, and then, just like that, guys, it's a little grabby, but it's not too loose, so if I let it go, it won't just fall out of there. And that's perfect, so now we can move on to our exhaust side. And again, guys, we were using a 5 thou shim on our intake side. We're gonna be using a 7 thou shim on our exhaust side here. Now, the reasoning behind that is, well, your exhaust side is uh, venting your exhaust gas out into the, the muffler, into the exhaust, and out of the engine. So it's gonna be hotter. And what does heat do? Heat expands things. So not only will the cylinder head and uh, you know your port here uh, will expand but this valve and this spring and uh, this rocker arm will expand with it as well so you're using a 7 thou which is 2 thou bigger than your intake side and the engineers at Kohler have uh, basically identified that uh, it will expand an extra two thousandths of an inch hold that in place so it doesn't move come in here with your T15 Torx it's super simple guys tighten that up just like that make sure you you don't strip it I'm gonna go and, and torque all of this uh, to the proper specs. Okay, so fast forward to now. I've gone and uh, torqued these to, uh, to spec. And coming back here, you can see our set screw. That's at 50 inch pounds, so I used my quarter inch torque wrench for that. And uh, the rocker arm pivot stud, I also went and torqued that to 120 inch pounds, again using my quarter inch uh, torque wrench because uh, I didn't wanna use my bigger one on uh, smaller screws like that because you could you could over torque stuff really simple so uh, yeah guys pretty simple there's your torque specs right there okay so now I'm going to get the uh, muffler and there's the uh, retaining nuts so you guys can see those are uh, 216 inch pounds so I've written it down here guys 216 inch pounds divided by 12 inches per foot gives you 18 foot pounds so uh, again, like I said, I'm going to be using the uh, bigger torque wrench for that. And uh, I've went ahead and just circled with a little bit of red marker, uh, anything that I'm going to be uh, torquing. And again, our valve cover, which is going to be, here we go, guys. So uh, it's going to be 95 inch pounds into a new hole and 65 inch pounds into a used hole. Now what that means is 95 inch pounds, that's your factory torque. So when this engine is brand new, guys, from the factory, they would torque uh, your your valve cover at 95 inch pounds but because the, those holes have been used and there's been a bolt in them we're going to be torquing our valve cover 
to 65 inch pounds. Okay, so we got our valve cover bolts that we had uh, organized in a little baggie here. These are gonna be 10 mil, so I've got an extension with a 10 mil socket here, and uh, we're setting our quarter inch torque wrench to 65 inch pounds. So again, guys, this might be a little tricky to see, but uh, on this one, it's pretty simple. You get down to where it says 60, and you set it to zero, and then you go plus five, and that'll give you your 65 inch torque spec. Okay, so like I said, guys, we got our torque wrench uh, set up. We got our new valve cover gasket here. Uh, this has got some uh, nasty little stuff in it, so I'm just gonna take a, a little rag and uh, wipe it out, make sure everything's clean. We're gonna put this gasket into this valve cover. You can see it's got a little lip that it goes into, and uh, we'll get that on. We'll get uh, some of these in just to the point where they're uh, snug, and then we'll get them torqued down again to 65 inch pounds. Okay, so we got our new gasket laying in there. Uh, just be careful when you guys are putting uh, the bolts in here because, you know, if I if I move this and adjust this to get that hole lined up, uh, you can see it pulls this hole out of alignment. So uh, what you guys are going to want to do is slowly go in there. Uh, or what you could do is uh, just put all your bolts through it first, like get it up so it's sitting like this. Uh, put all your bolts through it and then uh, that's probably what I'll do and then carry that over to your machine and then slowly push it in uh, until you get all those bolts uh, tightened up a little bit. Now I'm not screwing these in tight guys, I'm just getting them to the point where they're just starting to thread in so it'll hold itself on. Again we're looking, checking to make sure we're not ripping a gasket because I don't want to have to buy another gasket if you tear one. Again, have a little look, make sure you're lined up with your hole. Get it threaded in, so now it holds itself in place, uh, and now you can go and start getting your other bolts in here. Just using a, a rigid, uh, you know, gun here. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, being extra careful, I'm going to get the bottom ones in here. We're going to make sure, again, that we're going through our gasket, which I can see we are. Don't have to snug it up. We're just gonna get that one in there. Okay, I can see here that we're lined up, so I don't have to look on that one. So it should mean that the bottom one here, at the very bottom, is lined up. I'm gonna look anyways. Yep, we're lined up. Okay, so now I'll go and use this extension on our torque wrench and torque these down to 65 inch pounds. So again, staggered positions. We're gonna start just with this one here in the center. And I can feel it now, it's tightening up, and I can feel that gasket compressing right there. See how it bends right like that, but it's not turning, so that's tight. And the last one over here, good. So that's it, guys. Our valve cover is installed. And once again, guys, back off your your locking nut at the bottom there. Back off your torque wrench till it's loose. And uh, just so you guys could see, here's the uh, deck. I'm not sure if I got a shot of it before, but this thing was just completely packed full of stuff. And uh, check this belt out, guys. It's like it's almost like an H belt. It's not even a V belt. It's it's got these grooves on the this side, and then it's got grooves on that side. That's easily. Easily I could see that being like a 70 or $80 belt. So glad that that's uh, still good. Uh, because again, sitting uh, with, you know, just stuff rotting on top of this, uh, I'm glad we didn't have to replace that belt. Uh, this belt, the upper deck belt, that's still in good condition. And we checked all the, uh, the spindles and the pulleys to make sure that uh, none of the bearings are seized. Uh, we also flipped this up, uh, sharpened all the blades and uh, undercoated it. So uh, that'll be ready for uh, reinstallation once I get the uh, the engine running and, and fired up. So that's it for right now. I'm gonna uh, clean up the garage, clean up the workbench, and uh, you know wipe down all my tools, uh, get everything picked up, and then uh, once I get parts tomorrow, I'll be able to finish this thing off. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, uh, maybe think about leaving me a like, think about subscribing. You can click that bell down below and uh, get notified whenever I upload a video. Again, guys, thanks for watching. I enjoy uh, making these videos and I hope you enjoy watching them. I also hit the uh, starter gear with a little bit of release all, so I'll let that soak tonight and uh, hopefully tomorrow uh, when I put 12 volts to this thing and uh, fire it over, that thing will drop back down and uh, we won't have to pull the starter off. Okay, so I got the, uh, the carburetor installed here and uh, with a little bit of uh, 
heat shrink and a butt connector. I uh, hooked up the, the solenoid down there. We got our emissions line hooked back up. That one goes to there. And then uh, this one up here goes back to that one there, which I think goes back to the uh, fuel tank. So uh, now, um, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention the fact that there's a green uh, ground wire. You can see that right there. That ends up going back onto your engine right there. And uh, we got all of our linkage hooked up with our spring as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the air filter uh, backing plate on here. That's just a plastic piece. So that goes here. Uh, then your uh, overhead valve breather tube that connects into there. Uh, remember guys, this one's uh, the loose one, so it does go in. So once you pull it, you just want to give it a twist until it locks into position right there. And then uh, you won't be able to, uh, to move it anymore. You won't be able to turn it, but you, you got to remember it still goes back in, so just be careful. Other than that, we got the spark plug in. I cleaned it on the wire wheel, gapped it to 30 thou, and uh, yeah, we're almost uh, we're almost finished the uh, reassembly. I'm gonna leave all the shrouds off just uh, because I want to get the air box on. Uh, then we got to get oil into it, and I can put the muffler on. Okay, so I got the uh, air box on now and I uh, uh, still got to get the muffler on it so I'm going to do that and then uh, do the oil. Okay, so little update on the uh, the machine here. Uh, I got a liter and a half, uh, actually a little bit more uh, than uh, 1.5 liters of uh, 10W30 uh, in here because whatever I drained out it probably would have taken some out of the uh, oil filter that's uh, back up under there as well. So I ended up putting just a little bit more than 1.5 liters. It calls for 1.5, but like I said, if some come out of the uh, oil filter, then when I uh, turn this thing over and uh, the, some of the oil goes from the bottom end into that oil filter, uh, it's gonna lower on the dipstick. So I should be, uh, you know, theoretically, right on the uh, fill line, but uh, unforeseen little event here. The, uh, the starter, uh, the gear popped up again. Um, and then it stuck onto the flywheel and uh, you know it turned over uh, the first time and I even took the uh, spark plug out because my uh, eliminator battery doesn't have enough cranking amps to actually turn this thing when the spark plugs in uh, going back to what I said earlier about this needing the hundred dollar battery not the sixty dollar one because this one needs 300 cold cranking amps that's CCA so that's a big difference guys just because it says it's a 12 volt battery does not mean that it'll be good enough to start up your machine. So anyways, to get this off, you uh, you take off your two uh, 10 mil uh, nuts that are right up here, and then uh, this starter should slide right out. And then at the bottom here, you'll have two 12 millimeter nuts. So you're gonna wanna take uh, two 12 millimeter wrenches, uh, put one on the bottom and then one on the top, and you should be able to loosen that off. Okay, so I got my uh, eliminator here set up, positive to positive, just the uh, negative to uh, anywhere on the casing there and as soon as I flip that switch there this thing should pop up so I'll get a clip of that for you guys now so it does exactly what it's supposed to do the problem is it's getting caught on the flywheel I'm not too sure if it's because there's rust like look at all the rust that's on here where the, ge the gear of the starter is just uh, you know getting caught up on the rust of uh, the teeth of the flywheel that could be an issue. I mean, I could take a, a wire wheel, take it to all these gears, and then manually rotate the uh, the flywheel around to uh, try to fix that. Okay, so update on the starter. Uh, I put it back on after lubricating it, making sure that it worked properly. Same thing happened. The gear was sticking to the rusted flywheel teeth. So I got some, uh, you guys can see here, some anti-seize. So I'm not sure if this is gonna work. This is just some Permatex anti-seize, but anyways, I got it all over the, the starter gear. Then if we come down here to the engine, uh, before we get into that, I took just a wire wheel, steel wire wheel on a cordless drill here, and uh, I hit all the teeth. Uh, just to clean it up, I even hit the, uh, the magnet terminal there for the stator pickup, your coil pickups there. So uh, clean that up, and I went around and cleaned all the teeth. You can see, you know, I was hitting, I was hitting up there a little bit. Just watch, guys, because we got like, uh, wires and cables and all kinds of stuff here so I kind of went in from a, uh, an upward angle and uh, basically I just hit it as best I could and then uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work you know it, it I've never had to do this on another machine but I just took a little bit of uh, anti-seize and I went all the way around 
the uh, the gears so that hopefully uh, when I put this starter back in and uh, it lifts up uh, then you know it uh, hits that anti-seize and it kind of just slips off and to hook the starter back up you just uh, hook up your positive there and uh, take your red boot right there make sure it's wrapped around the nut at the bottom and then uh, basically guys you go up and uh, right here and right over there is uh, two little nuts. You can only put it in one position on this one. You don't need to worry about shimming it and adjusting it. Okay, so I got the starter installed. I got my eliminator here off to the side hooked up, turned on. So hopefully, oh, and I got the uh, parking brake on and I'm, and I'm on the seat. So got my key here. So we're gonna turn it. That's exactly, that's exactly what we need. Yeah, that's perfect guys. Great, so we fixed that issue. And remember guys, if uh, a new problem arises, things are gonna happen, you know, things are gonna go wrong, you're gonna encounter problems while you're fixing other problems. So you just gotta remember, like my old man says, just take her slow, one problem at a time. And uh, sure enough guys, that's all that she needed was a little bit of disassembly and a little bit of lubricant. And now everything works the way it's supposed to. So uh, yeah, I still can't fire it up. I put the spark plug into it. Uh, it's out now, but uh, I had the spark plug into it and I was trying to fire it up, but my eliminator just, it, it's got the 12 volts, you know, it's higher than 12, it's like 13 volts, uh, but it just doesn't have the cold cranking amps to, uh, to fire this thing. And even with the hone uh, that we did, the cylinder hone, which takes material off of the cylinder, which would, you know, in theory, give you less compression, this thing still has a ton of compression. Um, you know, so much so that my, my eliminator battery booster there just can't turn the uh, the cylinder over because uh, when it gets to the compression stroke uh, you know there's more compression in the cylinder than uh, than there is cold cranking amps in that eliminator so anyways uh, I'm gonna have to get a battery for this thing and uh, once I get a battery uh, well this thing should in theory fire rate up so the only thing left to do now is uh, hook up the battery and uh, we can get some uh, fresh gas into it get it running uh, then once it's running, I might have to come right down here to our adjustment. So that's at two turns out. Um, now, once I do get it running, I'll probably have to fool around with that a little bit. Maybe I won't. Who knows? So once I know that the engine's running and there's absolutely no issues, then I can get the black shroud for the engine back on. And then uh, I'll have to come under here and put all of our uh, just alu uh, aluminum paneling. I think it's like a noise suppressant uh, baffles. Uh, they go... Uh, up underneath there uh, just to uh, baffle I guess some of the noise and then there's that uh, that cover that goes over the top of the muffler I'll get that on and then once that's on then we can go ahead and get our uh, orange front clip and the hood which I just got back here for now so that it was uh, out of the way and I could uh, bring it outside hook up the deck and, and this thing's done apart from the tires he's still gonna need to uh, to uh, get those tires fixed whether he wants to put air in this thing every week when he goes to cut the grass or whether he wants to spend the 50 bucks so I take it down to uh, our local tire shop and uh, get them to change it but uh, yeah guys other than that this thing's uh, working out pretty good but uh, it's a long weekend now so a lot of places are closed and uh, there's all kinds of people that are coming over to our neighbors and our house and everywhere else so everybody's partying so uh, I'll have to wait until uh, Monday Tuesday to get parts and uh, once I get that battery, everything should be good to go. As expected, she's going to smoke like a banshee. So I'm going to close up these doors and let her run. Holy shit. Well, 
boys. This thing runs great. A uh, little bit of smoke, like I said, that's to be expected. Uh, all that ATF in the uh, in the muffler and uh, in the top end still, but uh, yeah, it runs great. It's got loads of compression. Now that the battery's all charged up, she turns over right away, and our uh, starter, you guys can see it popped right up and dropped down. Does exactly what it's supposed to do now, and uh, yeah. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. Now I had this thing running without the air filter on because, uh, well, I had to spray some carburetor cleaner uh, into the carb just to uh, prime it. You know, once that thing started sucking fuel, the uh, fuel pump took over. This thing runs great. I didn't even have to uh, adjust our air fuel mixture screw uh, right in there. Didn't even have to touch that, so that's nice. Yeah, so we're gonna get some air in these tires. We're gonna put the, uh, the shroud back on then we can get the orange uh, shroud around there and then get the hood on top of that well we'll probably end up doing uh, another oil change before we do that uh, just to make sure that all the ATF is uh, out of here and uh, this thing guys is basically done and our customer was very happy he was very pleased to get his machine back and he even said it ran better than it did uh, when he got it from the factory because he said there was a little sputter when uh, he first initially purchased it which is uh, funny and here's your final product so after we uh, got the oil changed and flushed uh, until the point where uh, the oil was coming out clear you guys can see we got the uh, the hood on it we got the deck on it uh, at this point the tires are done now but let this be a reminder to you guys don't let your machine sit or else you'll have to bring your equipment to eliminate her performance to get her fixed up well that's it for part two guys if you enjoyed the video think about leaving me a thumbs up you can click here to subscribe click here for uh, another video that you might have missed I upload weekly so be sure to come by and uh, check out the channel every now and then and as always guys Thanks for watching.